But to disrespect him on his revenge game opening week so that you can play Alvin Kamara over your true running back should be Mark Ingram blows my fucking mind. Sean Payton, you are a piece of shit. That's how I feel. You're listening to Let's Talk Fantasy Football, where men of fantasy genius have realized. Hey, guys, we don't need real football skills to dominate on the fantasy field. So slap on your pads and grab your helmet. Shit's about to get real. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to another edition of Let's Talk Fantasy Football. I am your host, Nick Shrek, and joining me tonight, guys, he's the fan favorite, the beast from the Northeast. He is the D-O-N, Don Chrisman. Don? Welcome. What's up, dude? It's good to uh, it's good to have football back. We're we're finally here. We're here to talk week two. We uh, you know, week one is in the books. I know we had a bit of a mixed bag here, me and you, uh, with the way our leagues kind of kicked off here in week one. So we're gonna we're gonna kind of throw that into the uh, the rearview mirror and uh, look forward to week two. But before we do that, Don, we want to give a shout out to Bench Boss. All you guys out there, you know them as View Pick. But they have a brand new name. They are still the revolutionary app that allows you to play fantasy football live while watching the game on TV. Predict the plays, the results of the play, and literally play fantasy football. You can sign up for the beta now by going to letstalkfantasyfootball.com backslash bench boss. So like I said, guys, we're here to talk week two. This is part one of the week two NFL preview podcast. So we're going to talk a little bit of NFL news. We're going to preview half of the games. We're going to take a few select reader questions. And uh, we're going to give you some D-O-N goodness because we know you absolutely love it. He's in a new place, his first podcast from that new room. And uh, we're excited to see what uh, you've got in store for us tonight, Don. Same roommates, though. Same roommates. Same roommates. That's all right. Same roommates. Just a great new place. So, Don, let's start with the NFL news. A couple things we'll breeze over because we're going to hit it when we talk about the games. Um, but Jordan Howard is on Wednesday's injury report uh, with apparently a shoulder injury. I don't know to what extent. Um, we're going to touch on him and the Bears a little bit later on. But just something to note, um, you know, when you guys are listening to this podcast, Wednesday he's on the injury report. Texan side, Brian Cushing gets a 10-game suspension for violating the league's policy on performance-enhancing drugs for the second time. What an asshole. Yeah, uh, I'm pretty sure he's had some issues with this pre-NFL as well. Being a Jersey boy, we're, we're kind of familiar with him as well. I'm pretty sure he had some high school issues with that. But um, I would say, you know, we don't really talk about defenses, but Houston D got blown out this week. I actually have some some stock in them. And uh, with Cushing being gone too, this could be possibly problematic. Yeah, it's definitely not how we how we expected this to, uh, to go. And now a 10-game suspension for him is just, I mean, dumb on his part. But, you know, I don't know. Performance enhancing drugs were never my cup of tea anyway. So uh, whatever floats Cushing's <laughs> boat, I guess. Um, Dom, you know, they talked about the injuries on the pre on the uh, recap podcast the other day, but obviously David Johnson uh, down and out. Cardinals coach Bruce Arian comes out and says Kerwin Williams will start against the Colts in week two. We're going to dive into that here when we get to the Colts game, so we won't do it here. Um, and then this next note for NFL news I have just because this guy's also a piece of shit. Uh, coach Pete Carroll comes out and he says he's anxious to see more of rookie running back Chris Carson, which is a total dick move to fantasy owners everywhere. Um, and we'll talk about that too when we get to the Seahawks, but I just, I couldn't hold it in. I wanted to share it immediately because I hate Pete Carroll. Yeah. Uh, he's a bigger piece of shit than John Fox with his running back bullshit. <laughs> well, we're, we're going to, we're going to talk about both of them. They're both, uh, they're both going to be very interesting to watch. Um, for the you Patriot fans out there as well, Danny Amendola is not practicing as of Wednesday uh, with the concussion. So interesting to watch because we're going to talk about some guys in that Pat Saints game, um, you know, Brandon Cook's revenge game, et cetera. Um, but let's not spoil the fun. Let's start with uh, the first game of the week, Don. We'll get into uh, our preview here. Let's start with Thursday Night Football. We're getting the Texans, who we just talked about, and Vinny's favorite, and it's disappointing he's not here, the Bengals. So yeah. Yeah, yikes. This game is it actually has the lowest over under of the week at a uh, score of 38. So Vegas thinks it's going to be ugly. We know it's going to be ugly. I don't have to do odds. Um is it going to be ugly? I, I think it's going to be ugly. I hope I hope there it's not ugly for the fact that they both sucked so fucking bad that it ends up being like a decent game because they both suck. Oh, it'd be nice if it, was, if it was a decent game. We don't need a a shitty game uh week 2 on Thursday night. Good 
Good job, JJ Watt, raising thirty-one million dollars for Houston, and then fucking disappointing the shit out of them for thir- uh, for this first week of football. Great job, dude. There they now have, hate you. There you Houston doesn't it. even give a shit about your thirty-one million dollars that you raised. There that you terrible have terrible ass loss. Don is upset, and so apparently is Houston. Um, let's let's yeah, start the let, let's let's start on the Bengals side of the ball because I see the emotions coming out of you, Don, and I want to kind of push that back down for a minute. Do you do you really trust quote unquote any of the Bengals? Because I look at you're not playing Andy Dalton, I don't think here. Um, and then it comes back down to the running backs, who is a total shit show. Um, Geo played forty eight percent of the snaps in Week One, but had eight touches. Joe Mixon had thirty five percent of the snaps, but eleven touches. And Jeremy, the starter Hill, had sixteen percent of the snaps with seven touches. So yeah, it's it's. Um... It's the new. It's basically the New Orleans backfield. You don't even know what to do at this point. Um, I don't. I don't. I wouldn't start any of the Bengals running backs. Uh, you just don't know what's going on. I think that's someone that you just continue to spectate and watch how the season goes. See how the Bengals play this week after that atrocious performance last week. Yep. Hopefully, it's a bounce back week for both of these teams. Um, but until then, I kind of lay low. Yes, you don't start Andy Dalton after that horrible performance they've already talked about McCarron possibly already taking Andy Dalton's job so um, I'm interested to see Tyler Eifert's value because I own again way too much stock now in this guy too so I'm hoping that that pans out but with uh, their offensive line looking kind of scary he could be more of a uh, blocking uh, scheme for him so I don't know I don't really want to trust any Bengal other than AJ Green I guess that's fair. And I was just going to say, I mean, on Tyler Eifert, I, I, I don't know. I mean, I stats tell a, a bad, bad news for you here, Don. Um, again, Houston looked bad last week, so we'll see the defense. But, uh, you know, obviously Eifert, one target last week. The Houston defense uh, allowed the NFL's third fewest yards to tight ends last year with 565 total yards. Again, I don't know what's going to happen here this year, but if the trend continues, it's not great for Eifert. Um, well, but, because I own both, they'll probably both – Texans D will suck, but they will shut out Tyler Eifert. So, so it, that's it, probably it, how that work. It's all, it's only fitting to go against you, Don. Again, like you said, if you own AJ Green, you're starting him. Um, there's no question. I would temper expectations though on AJ Green. Um, there's stats kind of on both sides. Um, the bad is that the Texans have contained Green historically, holding him to stat lines of five catches for 67 yards. Uh, he had one nice game here, 12 for 121. Five catches for 80, five catches for 47, five catches for 59. So about five catches and around 50 yards is what historically Green has done. He doesn't have a touchdown against the Texans. So that's the bad side. If you want the good sides of A.J. Green for stats to feel a little bit better, uh, he's drawn double-digit targets in seven of ten games uh, since the beginning of last year. The Texans' uh, cornerbacks are kind of old and haven't looked great. Um, So it depends what side you want to play. If you own Green, you're starting him. I just think don't. I wouldn't bank on a huge game here from AJ Green. Yeah. Um, and I think the other good side maybe here of the Bengals is I think you can you can stream their defense here against the Texans because I think they're going to be super bad. I'm sorry? I think you can stream the Bengals defense here against the Texans. Yeah, that's cool. Uh, this is like maybe. a depressing Thursday night game. Yeah, definitely one that I, I don't intend to have any stock in. But if you do, it's understandable. Um, Let's flip to the other side down. Let's talk Texans. Um, you know, QB, they went to Deshaun Watson, uh, whatever. Uh, he clearly liked right. DeAndre Hopkins. Um, and I really think the only two guys worth talking about are Lamar Miller and DeAndre Hopkins. Yeah. Who do you want to talk about first? Uh, let's talk about DeAndre Hopkins. All right, cool. What do you got? Start him. That groundbreaking, uh, groundbreaking news here, guys, from Let's Talk Fantasy Football. I agree. If you own DeAndre Hopkins, you're starting him. Um, Watson obviously wants to throw his way. Um, you know, I've got bad stats here to go against him, but it doesn't really matter because if you own him, you probably don't have a better option anyway. Um, yeah. It, it kind of is what it is. Um, Lamar Miller, though, on the other side, Don, uh, totaled 96 yards on 19 touches. Uh, he played the second most raw snaps of any running back in the league. That's according to Pro Football Focus. Um, the Bengals defense uh, gave up 155 yards and a touchdown last week to the Ravens. I think Lamar Miller can be just fine here. Yeah, I mean, I think they're trying to work who's a Deontay Foreman more, though. 
yeah, they're saying yeah. that, he, that they're going to up his snaps. And I, we saw quite a bit of Tyler Irvin too. Um, Lamar Miller is a definitely a must play though um, against the Bengals, you, you, but definitely watch out to see what they're, they're planning on doing with Deontay Foreman. And I saw quite a bit of Tyler Irvin as well, but uh, Lamar Miller's a start and DeAndre Hopkins is a start. And that's about it. Uh, I don't think anything changes for value for either with the quarterback change. They're still, even though Tom Savage is garbage, he's still better than Brock Osweiler. So anything's better than last year for these guys. Fair enough. They're going to toss it up to Hopkins. I agree. Miller is watching long-term this week. Fine. But uh, the running game definitely could change things uh, as we move forward. Don, let's switch gears. Uh, let's do our pick them actually before we switch gears. Who are you taking here? I'm going to go with, I think Bengals are going to bounce back a little bit more uh, better than the Texans will. So I'm going to go with Cincinnati. I'm with you. I'm going to take Cincinnati as well. So we'll sweep that through. Let's go over to the Bills versus the Panthers. Um, let's start on the Bills side of the ball. Uh, some good things came out of the Bills last week. Uh, you know, Shady, Charles Clay, and uh, Ty God, obviously, he, he played well. He was, yeah. you know, for uh, you know if you streamed him or whatever, again, he's not an every week guy. For, for someone they were planning on trading. Yeah, yeah, for, for someone that may not have even been in their plans. Right. Um, they fed Shady McCoy. He had touched the ball for 20, 27 times, 159 total yards. Um, we watched Mike Tolbert be the vulture that we all know and hate. Um, you know, he comes in, he gets uh, two carries inside the five-yard line, converts one of them. Shady got a little banged up. but well, that, Yeah, Shady that. got Shady did get banged up that one time yep. where they were hitting the goal line. So yep. um, I wouldn't worry about Tolbert too, too much. No, I wouldn't either. Again, but it's just something you may lose a few touchdowns there to Tolbert with the vulture. Uh, but Shady is going to continue to eat. Um, so obviously no concerns on Shady's front. Um, Charles Clay looked good. Um, I'm trying to see what his – he had eight targets. He was a top five finisher in fantasy with uh, four catches for 53 yards and a touchdown. So it appears that they want him involved in the offense, and Ty God is going to look his way. You own Charles Clay, I think uh, I think you continue to roll him out there. Yeah, I, th- I don't think Charles Cl- Charles Clay was owned in a lot of leagues. I think um, Walsh has been one that's been a little high on Charles Clay, and I think he's been one of those guys we've always talked about with uh, the rule at the previous years before. Um, Charles Clay, I'm going to stay off of just for now. Fair. Um, we'll see how week two goes first before I start really looking to Charles Clay and put my start investing in him. But, uh, yeah, man, good week for Charles Clay, and he's – it's pretty good tight end, so hopefully they still continue to target him. Yep, cool. I'm with you. Yeah, guys, don't go out and like trade for him, but if you have him, great. If it's on the wire, grab him. Do you have anybody else on the Bill side of the ball, Don? That you think you want is- to talk about? You want to talk about Jordan Matthews at all? With um, I believe he had 61 yards, but I believe they were only off of two catches. Uh, yeah, so I don't have the stats in front of me. Uh, what do you think on Jordan Matthews? I mean, two catches two, out of three targets. I still say that he's not someone you play, but at three targets isn't that much. But 61 yards, I mean, it's doable. Yeah, okay, fair enough. Keep your eye on on, on Matthews. I don't think, uh, again, it's someone – obviously someone you're trusting going into this week. But if he can capitalize and it can grow this week here against the Panthers, cool. Um, but keep your eye on him. That's all I have on the Bills side of the ball, though. Um, let's flip to the other side. Let's talk about the Carolina Panthers. Um, they looked good. Um, I was kind of surprised, actually, the fact that, I, again, I was a big uh, supporter of Jonathan Stewart going into drafts. I thought he was being criminally underpriced. And they came out, and at least in week one, it appears like the Panthers can support two fantasy-relevant running backs um, with McCaffrey and Jay Stu. Um, I still love Stewart, and you know I love him because he carried the ball for 18 times, 65 yards on the ground. 80% of those yards came after contact, so he's running really well. Uh, pulled in two targets for 17 yards and a touchdown. Um, he had an 86.7 elusive rating, according to Pro Football Focus, which was the second best mark am- amongst running backs. So he looks good. Again, he tends to get hurt as we get later into seasons. But right now, he looked good. He's healthy. I think they keep him involved with uh, McCaffrey. I think the two running backs open up the um, productivity for each other, actually. I think with – you know, defense is possibly scheming against McCaffrey kind of opens up for Jonathan Stewart and, and vice versa. Um, yeah, it looks like they're both fantasy relevant. It looks like Jonathan Stewart came on top for now. Um, 
but we'll see with you know how that goes for the rest of the season. I'm trying to pull up how many um, receptions McCaffrey had, which I just had pulled up and I lost that there. Definitely more than um, Jonathan Stewart though, and then he ended up having 47 rushing yards. He did still take 13 uh, carries, and then uh, he had five receptions. So if you're in that PPR league, I think overall McCaffrey will be your your guy to go to. Um, but Stewart did win week one for you. Yep, fair enough. Uh, and if you're a Cam Newton owner uh, and you're been roll, you rolled Cam out there last week, I don't think there's any reason you're not rolling him out here um, against the Bills going into week two. Um, Calvin Benjamin, same thing. Sucked. Play. Well, I still think you're playing him. Depends on on, on how deep you are. If you if you have uh, if you're in a two receiver league, it depends on where your backs are. I don't know if I'm really rushing to start Kelvin after that poor performance didn't really have that great of a year last year either. So if you have to, he's a flex. Yeah, play. I mean, I, 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 it was definitely a disappointment, a letdown uh, week one. I, I don't know. I'm still holding. I think that optimism going into when I went into drafts, um, kind of looking at Kelvin as a bounce back kind of candidate, essentially there. i um, just trying to see what, what his stats were across the board. I mean, yeah, it was what one for 25, which was, Essentially nothing. Um, yeah, I mean, Russell Shepard had freaking two for 53 and a touchdown. Again, fluky, but, you know, you're looking at literally no name wide receivers. Funches was two for 20. You know, even Greg Olson, two for 18. I mean, I, I don't know. They, they obviously moved it well with the running backs. Um, watch, I guess watch Kelvin. Maybe he's not as, as easy of a start as I originally said he was. Yeah, insert fart noise there, dude. Insert fart noise there. Fair enough. Um, is there anybody else on the Panthers you want to talk about? I think, again, Greg Olson, if you drafted him, you're rolling him. Uh, he didn't have a good week, but it's tight ends. Yeah, you're still playing Greg Olson. Okay. All right. Uh, that's all I have on the Bills and Panthers. Let's do pick them. I am taking the Panthers. I'm going to go Bills. All right. Don with the Bills. I am going with Carolina. All right, Don. Let's talk Bears and Bucks. I know you um you own some stock uh, in the Week One buy players last week, and that's more Dolphins related with Jay Ajayi. But uh, yeah, I only had Mike Evans in one. Yeah, so not as much stock there. But, well, there you go. So again, now we get the fir- our first look at the Bucks as we go into the NFL season. Um, you know, so Winston Evans, DJ X, Jaquiz Rogers. For those of you that drafted Jaquiz Rodgers and Darren McFadden, which I think a lot of people did, planning to use them as their week one running backs because of the Zeke issue and the Doug Martin suspension. They, they, things didn't go so well week one um, unless they had some really good alternatives. Um, so we get Jaquiz out here against the Bears. Um, I mean, I guess let's start on the Bucks side of the ball, Don. Who do sure. you like, who do you not like here, uh, you know, going against the Bears? Yeah, I think uh, actually Bears are a little underrated this year. Um, they played good. They played good football. Now they do have some injuries on the offensive side, but I think they're going to give Tampa Bay uh, some trouble on the defensive end. So um, I, you obviously are still rolling out Mike Evans. Uh, Mike Evans is going to have a good year. And if you have Deshaun Jackson, um, I still think he's a good flex play. Uh, and you roll Jaquiz. I think Jaquiz is going to be just like what he did last year. Had a really good start once he was playing when uh, Doug Martin was out. So I still think you go with the same game plan as week one if they would, didn't have that bye. I agree. I, you know, I don't think uh, you, you really change much here, Jaquiz. I actually will say that uh, if you want Mike Evans, you're playing him. But I think – I don't know if Mike Evans is going to have a great game here because I agree that Chicago look their, – their, their defense is actually, I think, a lot better than people have given them credit for. Um, if you look at their past defense, they played in cover six the highest rate in the league uh, last year, and they, they managed to shut down wide receiver ones at a pretty good rate. Uh, they held Julio to four catches for 66 yards last week. Um, again, if you own Evans, you're playing him, but I think if you want a dart throw in DFS, uh, I think Deshaun Jackson's the guy that I'd rather, uh, put a little low salary on because I think he's going to have more opportunity than Mike Evans to get in the end zone, um, this week. Yeah. Uh, and then let's talk about the flip side of the ball, the bears. We talked about Jordan Howard. He's on the injury report as of Wednesday afternoon with a shoulder injury. We don't know his status or the severity um, at least of what I can see, but we watched Tariq Cohen come out here. He looked really, really good. And, you know, to some extent that's terrifying. It's very terrifying if you're a Jordan Howard, a Howard owner, because you invested a second yes. round pick 
Likely and Jordan Howard. Um, Three Cohen had a good preseason. It's terrifying for the fact that it's also a John Fox offense where he loves just throwing in all those running backs all the time. So if you are a Jordan Howard um, owner, I don't know if you're scared yet, but don't be surprised at all if you see Tariq Cohen taking some uh, of those red zone touches too when you think that Jordan Howard is going to get that. Yes, I agree. And I think – I think I actually think it's gonna work out for Jordan Howard owners at least in the short term because I think we watch obviously Cameron Meredith go down he's out for the year we watch Kevin White go down with the injury so their wide receiver core is shot garbage at best um, so now Tariq Cohen comes in he has twelve targets he led the team he only had three total uh, fewer total touches than Howard um, obviously he had a good matchup against the Falcons they're super bad against you know pass catching running backs which we'll touch on when we get to the Falcons but. I think Cohen comes in and probably continues to be involved in the passing game. Um, how much he takes from Howard in the running game, I think still remains to be seen. But with their wide receiver core being really shitty, I think uh, Cohen is involved there. I think his value stays. If you got him off the wire, nice job. Uh, if you didn't, better luck next time. And uh, it's definitely something to watch. But we'll see with the injury with, with Jordan Howard as well. Uh, but I think Tariq Cohen is going to be the real deal. I just think it's more passing work than it is rushing work right now. Yeah, definitely. Um, like we said, you're not playing the QB in, in Chicago. Their wide receiver core is hot garbage. And uh, as far as I'm concerned, it's Jordan Howard and Tariq Cohen. Anybody else for you? Yeah, I just would say because um, the receiving core left is Kendall Wright and uh, Bellamy. Um, both of them were three out of four targets. And uh, I think it was Bellamy had like 17 or 20 yards. I don't know. And, and uh, Kendall Wright had like 35. The only one I think would actually be uh, – Someone under the radar would be Marcus Wheaton when he comes back from that broken finger, which he might be playing this week. And the upside, it might be Marcus Wheaton coming in and with those two receivers being down between Kevin White and, sure. um, and Cam Meredith. So I um, think the upside would be there. Could possibly be a waiver pickup in a, in a few weeks if Kendall Wright and Bellamy continue to do nothing. Glenn has got to throw to someone. That's true. Ball does have to go somewhere, um, it, and it's going to become relative to uh... – who we see, how we see it really shake out, uh, essentially. Yes. Um, but in this game, Don, I'm going to take the Bucks. I am also going to take the Bucks. All right. Let's move on to the Vikings and the Steelers. Um, let's start on the Vikings side of the ball, Don. You know, you put a few notes in here on some guys. Take us away. Yeah, uh, I put Diggs is good. Because he is, he is fucking good. He went for what? Very good. Two touchdowns, 93 yards with seven receptions. So you draft – I mean, his ADP was these, is pretty cheap for that kind of production. Diggs' is, uh, ADP was very cheap. If he continues to perform this way, which – what was it? His rookie year, he really blew up for a while once everyone took him off the waiver. Last year was a little underwhelming. But um, Diggs is really good, and I think Bradford's kind of hitting a stride. And uh, he, that's going to be his go-to guy. Uh, so I think Diggs is going to end up being a low-end wide receiver one throughout the whole season. So um, you got him at good value um, as a wide receiver two or possibly three if you lucked out. So um, that works out really nice and continue to play Diggs. He's going to have another good game. Completely agree. I think the other guy you want to keep your eye on here is uh, obviously Adam Thielen. He goes out there, nine receptions for 157 yes. yards. Doesn't find the end zone, but obviously involves, again, like you said, Bradford's kind of finding his stride here. Um, so I think it continues. They continue to move the ball here. Um, I think it's going to be an interesting game with the Pittsburgh Steelers. Um, and I think they keep them both involved. They, you know, I don't expect them both to go for, you know, 100 plus yards and a touchdown, you know, touchdown a piece, but um, definitely fantasy value there for sure um, in Thielen as well. So keep your eye on him. Um, he might have been on. Uh, you know, some wires today, again, some leagues are weird. So just, you know, waiver period's obviously over for everybody, I would assume by now, but keep your eyes out uh, for anybody that may be still hanging around for whatever reason. Um, yeah, definitely. And, and on the running back side, Don, you know, Vinny and, and Walsh had kind of talked about it um, with, with Dalvin Cook. And, uh, you know, I'd like to join on the bandwagon there because I, I was also wrong. I did not believe in Dalvin Cook at all. He comes out and puts up 127 yards on the ground three receptions and 10 yards uh, through the air. If you own Dalvin Cook, you're, you should be smiling wide. 
Yeah, the rookie running backs are um, panning out. Um, Dalvin, especially Dalvin Cook. Dalvin Cook had a great game. Um, he was a great runner for FSU, and uh, it looks like he's going to be a great runner for Minnesota. They really believe in him, and uh, he's definitely a, a must-start with a, a bright fantasy season for all of you for him ahead. Yeah, and I own I own absolutely zero shares of Dalvin Cook. Uh, no shock for anybody that's been listening to us all off season. Um, but again, I was wrong. If you have him, congrats. I think we need to start stop beating up on these rookie running backs. I believe a lot of us were down on Zeke at first last year, going into the we season. Um, it's, I think it's time to just start accepting and embracing the the rookie running backs. Yeah, I mean, you know. It, I'm still torn because it becomes a recency bias of, you know, do we then overcompensate because, you know, you can talk yourself either way because I think we were often because his, historically rookie running backs weren't, you know, the go-to um, again. And it's one week, but you know, we'll see. I agree though. It's going to, ha- it's going to take some fine tuning going into next year. Yeah, That uh, wasn't, because, a, that wasn't a fluke game though. That was, um, that no, was I, I, I agree. I agree. But in, in general, the concept's definitely going to need uh, some reevaluation on our end. You don't, um, you don't have to yell at me. Oh, I'm yelling. I'm yelling. Um, I'm trying to – so what else we got on the Viking side of the ball? Kyle Rudolph. Um, yeah. Kyle Rudolph came down with – I think he had three receptions. He caught all three of his targets uh, with a lame-ass 26 yards. But, of course, in Kyle Rudolph fashion, one of them was a touchdown. That's what you're going to get out of Kyle Rudolph. That's why I don't like owning Kyle Rudolph because you're never going to get yardage out of him. But you got to just hope that it, he's a touchdown. He's a boom or bust. Bradford does like to hit him in the red zone, though, so it paid off for you guys week one. This is what you're going to see. Um, small, you know, always going to be minimal yardage, but it's always possibly a target in the red zone. So Yeah, you knew what you, knew what you were getting into with Kyle Rudolph, which yep. is, like you said, exactly this. One guy I do want to ask you about really quick on Latavius Murray. I know it's been one week, but, you know, if this continues after week two, is Latavius Murray even – Worth owning? No. Are, um, are, are you, are you mean, waiting past week two? Or are you saying he's not even worth owning now? I honestly never even went after Latavius Murray. I wasn't so far against Dalvin Cook as you guys, but I also stayed away from him with how I drafted this year. But I also made sure to stay far away from Latavius Murray. Uh, Oakland got rid of him because they just didn't like him. They just thought he was a one-dimensional back. Um, it kind of seems to be the same way the Vikings are so invested on Dalvin Cook. Latavius Murray is just their – second runner when need be he is not worth holding on to when especially when there's some good waivers right now so you can probably drop Latavius Murray yeah I uh I agree I'll keep my wrong train going um but that's uh that's it I like what I see from Sam Bradford I want to see a little bit more before uh I continue to sing his praises to get him into that uh weekly conversation about uh being viable for me yeah well, we'll see, man. I, I think Bradford found a home with Vikings. Saw some flashes last year. Um, I was two years too early on him. I really liked him his last year in, uh, when he was still in St. Louis, and that didn't work out. But uh, uh, that's we'll see. Right. I, think, I think he'll actually have a good year. Continue to follow up. He might be someone that you might be able to stream off in a few weeks and uh, possibly play. Yeah, I am with you. Uh, so we'll see what happens there on the Vikings side. Let's flip to the other side, Don, and let's talk about the Pittsburgh Steelers. Le'Veon Bell takes the field um, after his holdout there, and boy, oh boy, not the Le'Veon Bell that everyone was hoping and expecting uh, as we went into week one here after they paid essentially probably a top two pick on him. Yeah, some serious bullshit, Lev Bell. Some serious fucking bullshit. I own you in one league and you did shit. He's he's going to be fine, but it, it was a big, big, big disappointment. I'm in panic mode. <laughs> yeah, you you woke up this morning. You were trying to trade Le'Veon Bell, right? You I you, almost you, dropped him. You, good for you, man. It takes a lot of guts to admit a mistake, you know. So I might still. Well, for those of you guys listening that don't pick up on sarcasm or anything we say, don't drop Le'Veon Bell. There's nothing to panic about. Le'Veon Bell is going to be fine. Um, yeah, there's nothing. There's nothing more to talk about in Le'Veon Bell minus he screwed you over week one. Oh well, you're going to get screwed in fantasy football. Antonio Brown, on the other hand, for those of you that invested in him, were super happy catching 11 balls for 182 yards. Um, incredible. Yeah, you should start him again. 
Yeah, no question. Uh, that's, I mean, that's you got what you got the most. I'm, I'm assuming you probably took him third or fourth pick. You got the number one receiver, and he did what the number one receiver should do. So, yeah, good for that's... you for going Antonio Brown. That was probably the safest pick um, in the first round. Yeah, I agree. That's what you. That's what you paid for, um, and you got it. Also on the Steelers side of the ball, Don, uh, Jesse James, eight targets, catches six for 41 yards and two touchdowns. Um, yeah, that's a, that's a train I can definitely get a board on. Uh, I think Jesse James is going to be the uh, much younger and healthier Heath Miller. And um, Big Ben always loved going to Heath, so I think Jesse James is going to fill that role. And uh, I think he's a good tight end starter. It's incredible. I, I'm I'm still shocked at the performance that he turned in with the two touchdowns and the targets and, and everything else, but he's got it working with Big Ben, so what the hell do I know, right? Definitely. I, I think it's uh, right. I think it's good stuff. And unlike unlike Martavis Bryant, which was not good stuff. No, two receptions, eleven was it fourteen, 14 yards. yards. Sorry. I apologize. Fourteen the yards. Only promi- the only promising thing though is it was he did get six targets. So yeah. It could be worse. He could have caught two out of two. Could be worse. We'll have to wait and see how he, uh, like you said, how it plays out. But he's always been a little more boomer bust anyway. Just monitor that. Uh, he, you know, things aren't automatic depending on who else you have on your roster. Um, so would to, you um, still start Martavis Bryant? I think it depends who you have. To be honest, I mean, you know, if we're watching Jesse James come into the picture like he is, and we believe he's going to be involved. You know, so if say he takes another six targets this week, Antonio Brown's going to see his usual targets. We'll call it ten. Um, so you know, you're and start Bryant over Brown. Definitely start Bryant over Antonio Brown. Yeah, yeah, yeah. cool. That's what I'm saying. Um, I don't know. I would say was Bryant is for some it might be their second receiver, right? So yeah, I don't think you still stick with him. I mean, the six, the six, the six targets were still there. Um, this is another. Good game to gauge. A little odd, you know, against Cleveland, you would, th- would think they would do a little bit better, but I think Cleveland also has a little bit more of an underrated defense as well. Um, so I think you still roll him out and uh, kind of hope for the best before you start worrying about Martavis Bryant. That's fair. I'm not. I guess I, I guess you can't go into panic mode yet, um, but I'm definitely worried because again, Le'Veon Bell came back. He's going to be fine, but if he's going to be fine, that means there's more touches, more involvement for him, or maybe he just gets more efficient. We'll see, but. I, I'm I'm not at panic mode yet on Bryant, but if you have other options, throw your questions our way. Uh, I'd love to take a look at some some comparison options as we look at lineups. Um, that is all I have on the Steelers. Don, do you have anything else you want to talk about I mean, here? We have we haven't hit Big Ben, man. Oh right. Oh, I always kind of gloss over Big Ben because I never own him. Um, if I'm being completely honest, uh, not either. But that's uh, a lot of people do own him. So yeah, that's true. Two touchdowns, 263 yards here for Big Ben. Uh, puts up 15.7 fantasy points. Um, has the interception. I'm trying to see where are they're at their home. Big Ben is way is really always usually good at home. If you own Big Ben, you're playing Big Ben. Yeah, I agree. He's like a Mr. Hyde with with uh, Big Ben with home and away game. So, I mean, Minnesota D is good, but. I think you still play them. I agree. They're, they're not good enough for to dissuade me away from Big Ben at home. If we were in Minnesota, definitely a different conversation. Um, but I think we see the good side of Big Ben this week. Antonio Brown, another big week uh, for you, Brian owners. Fingers crossed. Um, with Big Ben out of the way, Don, is there anybody else that I skipped over? No, nah, man. I think I think we're good. All right. Guys, we're going to take a quick break. You're going to hear from Bench Boss, and we'll be we, back. We, you got to pick. You got to pick yeah. him, dude. Oh, I'm so bad with pick them tonight. All right, uh, Vikings, Steelers. I'm going to take the Steelers. I'm going to take the Vikings. Oh, okay. Fair did, enough. Did we, I like it. Did we, did we pick Bears Bucks already? Um, I'm, a little, I'm a little drunk. Yes, we did. Actually, I'm zero drunk. But <laughs> we, we did pick the Bears and Bucks. We both went with uh, the Bucks. I'm just still debating on if I drop Levy on Bell. All right, well, I'll think about that one. 
Well done debates that we're going to hear from bench boss and we'll be back to talk Cardinals and Colts this year. Dominate your friends with free play by play fantasy football from bench boss. Bench boss is the first play by play fantasy football game where you must think like the players and coaches on the field as you predict the outcome of every play earn rewards as you compete against friends and fans across the country. Bench boss is currently recruiting beta testers and we need you visit benchboss.tv to learn more and sign up today. All right, guys, and we are back. That was Ben. Bench boss, check them out. Get on their sign up list for the beta testing, guys. They're adding new users each week. So we go into week two. Hopefully, we'll get you guys into the beta testing. Everything looks awesome. We can't wait for it to be out in the open for everyone. But until that time, guys, we are here to talk Cardinals and Colts. Uh, obviously, the big news on the Cardinals side of the ball: David Johnson out. Bruce Arian says he hopes uh, around Christmas, which for fantasy owners is done. Um, you know. So that's that stinks. If you spent your first round pick on David Johnson again, you wouldn't change it if you know, in hindsight. But oh, Carson Rick, Palmer looked bad. Three interceptions. Carson Detroit Palmer. just do another fourth quarter comeback like they always goddamn do. So he looked bad, but I'm gonna say something which is somewhat concerning. I think Carson Palmer's a good streaming candidate this week if you need to stream a QB. And I think I think that I think it's I think it's you know and I'm not the only person out there. There's been a couple of sites that already have it, and it's you know it's more of a common thing than you think. But the Colts are the Pro Football Focus's worst graded pass coverage defense, and they just got picked apart by Jared Goff, who we we laughed at on the podcast this preseason. Uh, Goff went 318 yards in a score. He was 22 of 30 passing. Uh, Vontae Davis is out with the injury. I just think Carson Palmer is going to have to throw the ball until we see what uh, Kerwin Williams does in the backfield. I think Larry Fitzgerald, all those guys are going to be involved. I like a, I like a big bounce back game here from Carson Palmer. That's fair. So again, it, it, it's really just playing the odds that I think the Colts are bad all around. Um, so again, it's all relative to what you want to invest in. Um, but Kerwin Williams, the starting running back, according to Bruce Arians, for the Arizona Cardinals, he takes over um, a big role, which, again, earned David Johnson the number one draft pick overall. Don, if you got Kerwin Ker- Ker- Williams off the waiver wire uh, this week, is he immediately yeah. in your starting lineup? Uh, that's a good question. Um, yeah, I mean, if I'm a David Johnson owner – and uh, running backs are light because if you're taking the one overall, you might be going receiver after that. Kerwin Williams is going to plug in, um, especially if you're in like a, a league where um, get awarded for you know turn yardage, but might be someone that you want to play, um, which I think we're going to hit in a question soon. Um, yep. So yeah, I, w- I would play him if I'm a David Johnson owner and uh, I'm in need of a running back. I mean, they're going to be running the ball against a really bad defense, so. Might as well test out Curl and Williams against Colts. I agree. I think I think you roll him out there. I think uh, you know you're not expecting David Johnson numbers, obviously, from him. But if you lost David Johnson, uh, you know you own some other guys who, you know, shit the bed. Um, you know, I think he can put up. Uh, well, we'll say running back two numbers this week. Uh, again, you don't know because we haven't seen it, but they've committed to him. Uh, I got to think they feed the ball to him. We'll see if Carson can hit him in the air. Um, I'm cool with him as probably my running back too. He would be in my lineup if I owned him. Um, unless you somehow snag Zeke Lee and can stack some crazy combination, you know, there's always exceptions to every rule. But, um, yeah, I, I think the wide receivers for the Cardinals as well, Don, like I said, Larry Fitz I think is a go. Um, you know, he looked just like the Larry Fitz of old, I'll say, of always. Uh, I'm trying to pull up his stats in front of me now, but he looked good. He did look good. Um, again, that's week one. I always like somehow tried downplaying Larry Fitzgerald, but um, he ended up. I mean, he got thirteen targets, which is nice. Yep. Um, he only caught six of them, but seventy-four yards. So again, it's Colts defense. This is the time to play Larry. Don't shy away from him now. Yeah, I agree. And you know, we saw JJ Nelson go five receptions for forty-three yards and a touchdown. Um, again, another guy. And John Brown, I believe, might not play. He's got some quad issue, I believe. Okay. So questionable. So that would actually raise your value on JJ Nelson. So, yeah. So again, between him and Fitz guys, I think there's, I think there's a lot to go around um, in the passing game because I expect a big game from Carson Palmer. I'm kind of all in on the Cardinals here against the Colts, which isn't a crazy bold uh, statement with how bad they look. 
Um, I'm staying away from the tight end game here with Jermaine Gresham. Go spin the wheel if you were thinking about it for any freaking reason. Um, go get Jesse James. Go get Jesse James. 100%. I am with you. Um, but that that's it for me. I've got I've got nothing else. I'm not interested in Andre Ellington, uh, you know, or any of the other backs that they want to. They've been you know, CJ two K. No, not right now. Kerwin's the man. Kerwin's the man. I mean, based on Arian's statements, again, we'll see how he looks. But uh, play, play him over Le'Veon Bell. I would drop Le'Veon Bell for Kerwin Williams. Hundred <laughs> percent. Do it now. Uh, is there anybody else on the Cardinal side of the ball for you, Don? Nah, man. I think that's really all we got to hit. All right, let's flip it. Let's talk about the Indianapolis Colts, who we clearly do not like, um, especially based on my all-in here on the Cardinals. Um, Frank Floor, who we always say has a pretty consistent floor, um, he barely saw the field once the Colts fell behind on. That could be a concern moving forward because I think the Colts stay bad. Uh, Marlon Mack received the early red zone snaps and scored the touchdown. I think the arrow points up for Marlon Mack, and if it could point down any further for Frank Gore, I think it does. Yeah, and they signed Matt Jones um, right poop. before the <laughs> Matt Jones. There it is. Um, yeah, it's your boy, man, Matt Jones. Yeah. Um, so that just shows that they're probably looking to lean or wean away from Frank Gore coming through. You know, once it starts hitting midseason. Get Marlon Mack more in there. Maybe they're going to want to do a little bit more of a role with Matt Jones. So um, I don't know how much life left you got with Frank Gore for fantasy production. Yes, I, I agree. I think if Marlon Mack is for some reason out there in your leagues, go get him, put him on your bench. Um, but it, I don't think there's anybody in the Colts that I want to start this week. None. Not even Dante Moncrief. I know we have one reception for 50 yards. T.Y. Hilton went three for 57. I am looking, I think, at other options uh, for me. I don't yeah. know. You don't even think T.Y. is even worth a flex play? I mean, he, he could be worth a flex play depending on who you have. Um, you know, I think it's Now, they, might, they might be playing Jacoby Brissett this week. Fair. Um, Which, I think I think I'm – listen, don't hold your breath, but I think T.Y. Hilton is just because of his talent – his value is definitely down, but I, I don't think I don't start him still. I think I will still play him or put him in, in the flex spot and, and kind of hope for the best and uh, kind of go from there. Okay. I, I mean, I can't, again, I can't argue that I think for me, it just depends how deep your league is. Um, you know, we just you, you look at historically his numbers with and without luck and they're just consistently super bad. Again, we'll see what he does with Percet, uh if they do in fact start him. Um, but yeah, I'm going to stay away from all Colts uh, that I own or any place, really. Um, is there anybody outside of TY that you would or get, will get behind? Def not Jack Doyle. Def not Jack Doyle. Um, so that does it then for Colts, Cardinals. I'm taking the Cardinals. Don? That was pretty good. Um, I'll go with Arizona. All right. We're both on the Arizona sweep. No surprise there. Big game here, Don. Patriots versus the Saints. They're in the Superdome. Uh, you've got Brandon Cooks coming back. Possible revenge game here we'll talk about. Can the pa- Patriots bounce back? Um, and Drew Brees is just really good at home. What side of the ball you want to start on here? This is a fun one. I'm excited for this one. This, this is a lot of fun. What side do you think is going to be more fun? Let's talk about the Saints and how AP was disrespected by Sean Payton. Oh, tell me. You know, you fucking – Go out there and you pay your players to to be dirty. You fucking cheating ass, not playing AP ass, sitting there thinking you could play a rookie ass. Alvin Kamar over Mark Ingram, dude. I mean, come on, Mark Ingram needs to goddamn leave the Saints and disrespecting Adrian Peterson like that. And I'm a Packer fan, but I got the utmost respect for AP. AP is not the old A. AP, but to disrespect him on his revenge game opening week so that you can play Alvin Kamar over your true running back should be Mark Ingram blows my fucking mind. Sean Payton, you are a piece of shit. That's how I feel. And there you have it, guys. That's why Don picked the Saints first to tell you how he truly feels about AP, about Sean Payton, about Mark Ingram. Uh, I brought a lot of fantasy value uh, information there for you guys. Yeah, a lot of names, guys. Uh, Alvin Kamara, Mark Ingram, 
Adrian Peterson. And if, if you're in a coach's league, Sean Payton, he even touched on him. So Don brings you the full breadth of every fantasy football, you know. Fucking value. sit Sean Payton because he sucks. Bench that man. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I mean that's the running back situation. I, I honestly don't know where to really gauge on what anyone should do at that instance. I AP, I'm assuming is you no, know, that's his, their third option. I don't know what um, they'll do once they hit red zone. I mean, we really didn't get to see too much of that in the last game. Um, Saints got beat up pretty well. So um, for the running back stance. AP's probably third option. They really like this guy, um, Alvin, with their uh, as a rookie. And then Mark Ingram is the healthier, younger back that should be the all-around starter, to be honest. So AP sit, possibly drop. Yeah, I don't even think, I don't even think you should own AP. He had nine total snaps. I don't think so either. Well, unless you know he bitches enough at Sean Payton where something changes, um, he is not ownable right now. Yeah. Um, did he pick up Kamar? Yeah, I think he's worth getting on a bench, uh, you know, and seeing. I mean, again, I don't know how it's going to play out, but I think he's worth owning over Adrian Peterson. There's more upside, I think, in the rookie than there is AP. Without question. Yeah. I, I, I mean, I I'm know. so mad that I'm, I'm not even calling Alvin Kamara by his right, real name. I'm calling him Kamar. I'm not giving him that, the ending A. So I'm so pissed Whatever. off. Whatever, whatever, whatever floats your boat, Don. That's next, why. You know, Trey Edmonds is playing in the next game. I mean, it's you, the only one I would respect is if they keep playing Coon. It's my man. Well, maybe but he might have just amount of a valuable um, fantasy value as fucking AP right now. Well, we'll we'll reach out to Sean Payton, Payton and see if we can get a statement uh, here on Let's Talk Fantasy Football. He doesn't even deserve a statement. Uh, I'm I'm surprised. I don't want to hear your excuse, Sean Payton. I'm I'm I'm, I'm surprised at uh, the the massive hate, but I I do it. It's AP, man. Listen, I get it. It is not AP of old AP, but come on, man. This is week one going against Minnesota at Minnesota. You got you got to respect the man a little bit, and the fact that it's not even that. Like you're playing Kamara over Ingram still, and that's a problem, dude. Like it, it's I don't get it. Ingram's a good running back, and they're just I, I don't know what Ingram did. He definitely banged Payne's mom or something. I, I don't know. It's crazy. Put that on record, and then we'll ask fucking Peyton what he thinks about that. I agree. It sounds like a good opener to me. Um, Are any of the fantasy? Uh, is there any fantasy value for any of these guys? Track before I keep going off. I, not as a, in a running game. It, if you know, pick your poison. If you want to roll Ingram out there, go for it. But you're you're at your own risk. I think on the Saints, uh, you know, Michael Thomas. You own him. You're obviously playing him. Um, you know, Kobe Fleener looked good. Five catches, 54 yards, and a touchdown. Um, I'm interested to see what happens with Willie Sneed when he comes yeah. back. But I think Kobe Fleener helped pick up that slack, and I think he remains a viable option here at tight end. Ted Ginn is also um, someone to keep your eye out on as well. Four for 53. And, you know, in PPR, it's almost a 10-point week uh, for something you probably paid, you know, or someone, I'm sorry, you paid probably a 16, 16th round pick for. Um, it's great. So again, you're not st- you're obviously not starting him yet, but someone to definitely have on the bench. Yeah, and if you know what, hey, if you want to put him in a DFS lineup this weekend, I'm totally on board with it because Drew Brees at home is ridiculous. He's thrown 58 percent of his TDs at home. The Patriots uh, just let Alex Smith post the second best fantasy game of his career against them, um, and Brees has a 10 to one career touchdown to intercept interception ratio against the Patriots. I expect a huge week here from Drew Brees, which. I think correlates to Michael Thomas, Kobe Fleener, and who knows, maybe even some Ted Ginn action. Definitely. Uh, do you have anything else on the same side of the ball? No. Um, with you talking about um, Kobe Fleener, though, is he something that you're going to start or are you going to still uh, I would start Kobe Fleener if you're, if you're looking to spin the wheel and pick some guys. You know, I mean, you know, I, I, I like Kobe Fleener. I would start him. All right. Yeah, I'm, I'm okay with well, it. Well, there you have it. Getting Kobe Fleener in there. Don, let's flip the other side of this fun wheel we've got going on, and let's talk about the New England Patriots. They got spanked by my Kansas City Chiefs, thank God, on Thursday Night Football. Uh, Alex Smith looks good, but that's, we're not talking Chiefs. And uh, Tom Brady looked old, um, and the Patriots looked not like the Patriots we expected them to be. Um, do, you, do, you, do you buy into the revenge game narrative here for Brandon Cooks? Do you think there's someplace else we should be looking uh, if you own Tom Brady, you're obviously playing Tom Brady. This isn't you're not like oh my god, the world's ending because of last last week. Yeah, 
Um, well, Tom Brady's definitely being started. I don't know if it's going to be to the performance of a revenge game, but I think Brandon Cook should have a, a good game against a piss-poor New Orleans defense. So um, one thing they can never do as well is just support Drew Brees with some sort of defense. So um, this should be a good game for Brandon Cooks. So this should pay off for the, you know, the probably second or third round that you you picked Brandon Cooks up. Um, so he's definitely a play. I definitely uh, – Danny Amendola had a great game too. Now, I, I think that's someone that you should pick up and stash on the bench because with uh, Julian Edelman being now out for the year, Danny Amendola slides right into that um, role. Now, Danny Amendola is probably going to be hurt like three times this year. Um, even after this concussion, yep. but I mean, he got a lot of targets week one and yeah. uh, that's going to play off, especially when you got some bye weeks going around. If he is healthy in that lineup that week, you, uh, he's someone that you should feel confident with playing actually. I agree. We'll watch and see what happens with his concussion as we get closer to game day. But Brandon cooks again, should have a nice game against the Saints. Tom Brady bounces back. I think Gronk bounces back. I think if Amendola doesn't go down, the guy you're interested in here is Chris Hogan. If you want a dart throw, um, he obviously gets the Saints. Uh, Hogan runs 64% of his routes from the slot, uh, or he did in week one at least. The Saints have a very soft uh, middle of their defense, and Adam Thielen in the slot last week, uh, seven receptions for 146 yards. So I think that mean that could bode well for Chris Hogan here uh, with Tom Brady wanting to bounce back. I like him if you want to dart throw or you want to put him in a DFS lineup. Yeah, I'd be more cool with him at DFS before I'm dart throwing Chris Hogan yet. I agree in, in, a, in a regular league, but – a good guy to watch, I think, for DFS for sure. Um, is there anybody else on the Patriots side? Oh, well, the running backs, I guess. Yeah, what let's we talk doing? about that fuckery as well. Is I think um, White, Burkhead, I mean. I think James White is a uh, startable flex play for a PPR league. Um, I think you should still roll out Mike Gillisley, especially with the Saints sucking. Uh, Deion Lewis and Rex, Rex Burkhead, I I, some people own him, but I, I'm never really going to play Rex Burkhead. And Deion Lewis, you got to wait to see how much of a role he's going to consistently play. But the only two that are playable are Gillisley. Gillisley, I think you play in your lineup. I think he's RB2 value. And uh, James White uh, is good PPR value. So if you're in a PPR league, I think he's a good flex. I'm on board with both those calls, Don, 100%. What about Dwayne Allen, man? No. <laughs> Fair enough. Nope, none at all. Um, all right, Don, I'm going to take the New England Patriots in a shootout. I'm going to go – oh, you know, I want to go New Orleans, but fuck Sean Payne, I'm going Patriots. There it is, the Pats. Um, all right, Don, let's move forward. We're going to talk about Browns and the Ravens. Ooh, um, nothing makes me more happy and satisfied than talking about the Browns and Ravens. Than Joe Flacco and the, and the Browns, right? There's nothing better. Um, Ravens, Kaiser. The Ravens' defense looked really, really good. Um, They came out, played super well. Five sacks, five turnovers last week. I think they're another great start this week, obviously. Uh, They faced the rookie in Kaiser. Kaiser was sacked seven times last week, so things should bode well for the Ravens. They should. Um, Danny Woodhead's going to miss four to six weeks with the injury. Um, Shocker. Yeah, shocker. Woodhead's banged up again. Um, So, you know, we look at, you know, the problem, well, I mean, it depends if you want to declare it a problem or not. Um, you know, Buck Allen and Terrence West are now, you know. They both uh, had games against Cincinnati. What did you say? They both had games against Cincinnati. Yeah. So who are you, who do you, do you trust either of them here? Or who's your guy for the Ravens? <laughs> I think Terrence West is your safer bet right now, but I think I Buck just- Allen – is um, someone that you're picking off the waivers and hopefully uh, works out well for you. Uh, but Terrence West is definitely your safer play. Yep, I agree. I think I think Terrence West is like a low-end running back too um, with this matchup here against the Browns uh, because I think he's the guy. Uh, he got the red zone roll when Woodhead went down, scores the TD. I think he gets the volume this week. Um, yeah, that's some good fantasy value right there. Yeah. Hell yeah. Uh, Jeremy Macklin, two receptions, 56 yards, and a touchdown. Um, yeah. You know, I mean, hey, he's, you're going to go out there. I think you can get some – he'll be fine against the Browns. You want to put him in your flex, roll him out there. Great. Uh, I'm not really interested in anybody else at all. 
No, I'm not playing Mikey Wallace or Ben Watson. Nope. So well, you, oh, you should you should bench Danny Woodhead too. Yeah. Oh, definitely do that. Definitely yeah, don't yeah, play yeah. Danny Woodhead. Um, yeah. 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 You might be able to put him there. But let's flip the other side down. Let's talk about the Browns. Uh, Corey Coleman comes out, five receptions for 53 yards and a touchdown. Um, he clearly has a good thing going here with Kaiser. Um, good start. I think it continues. They only build rapport moving forward. If you own him, I think he's in your lineup. I like Corey Coleman. Um, I think he could be a flex play as well, um, depending on how deep your receivers are. Yeah, um, fair. Oh, yeah, uh, that's how I feel about Corey Coleman. Um, I think Kenny Britt's going to have a bounce back um, season. I don't know if it's going to be next week against Baltimore, but I wouldn't hit the panic button just yet on Kenny Britt. I agree. He, fu- he fucked me in week one, but I think you, over as we move through the season, will bounce back. Um, don't start him next week, though. Yeah, I'm, I'm not rolling him out against the Baltimore Ravens. Um at running back, Don, Isaiah Crowell comes out. He goes two receptions for 33 yards, and he's got 33 yards on the ground. Um, very meh game. Uh, I mean, I guess very, whatever. That's Very, very Browns-ish. Very Browns-ish. That's fair. Uh, if you own him, you're rolling him out there based on what you paid for him. No question. Yeah, he was a, a nice 1.9 yards per carry. I'm glad I own none of you, Isaiah Crowell. Yeah, uh, but if you, if you if you if you – Drafted him. I'm assuming he's your first or second running back. Um, so go ahead and hope for the best next week and put him in your lineup. Agreed. Um, that's it for me on the Browns. There's nothing else of value here. Johnson, I'm not playing um, just yet, and neither David Njoku. So um, that's it. That's really all right. I can do with the Cleveland Browns, man. I'm taking the Baltimore Ravens. I'm going to go with Ravens as well. Sweep it I think it's going to be a close game, actually. I'll say I think the Ravens take it pretty handily, but we'll see. Um, last game on the pre- uh, part one preview, guys. Eagles, Chiefs. Uh, let's start on the Chiefs side of the ball because why not? Um, why, don't, why don't you take it away, man? Yeah, Aren't then, you a Chiefs fan? Uh, uh, just a little bit. Uh, not a huge fan. Yeah. Um, Alex Smith uh, looked incredible against the Patriots. Do I expect him to do that again? No, um, but he's going to look good, I nope. think. Um, but he's not going to be as good as he was, I think, against New England. Um, but as a whole, Kareem Hunt uh, explodes. Is he going to go for 45 points again this week? Probably not, but if you own him, he should be in your lineup. Um, Tyreek Hill, I think, established himself as safe. You're playing him. Uh, Travis Kelsey, you're playing him. Yep. Um and I actually think Alex Smith here can be a good uh, streaming candidate if you need a QB. Um, again, that's probably partially my Chiefs bias, but he looked good against the Patriots. I think he can do it here against the Eagles. They finished as the 26th uh, best team in pass defense for points allowed to QBs last season, and they just lost their top corner, Ronald Darby, to an ankle injury. So uh, I think they're – He's a good option if you really need a streamer, depending on how deep your league is. Yeah, well, you left me a lot of room to talk about the Chiefs, so um, I agree with all of what Shrek said there. Flip it to the other side then, Don. Tell us about the Eagles. What do I you got? Nothing. Nothing. All right. Uh, no, I mean, listen, Carson Wentz had a good game, dude. He had that great play, man, after uh, sneaking through and uh, not getting sacked and like breaking through two defenders to throw that touchdown. So Carson Wentz looked actually – a little bit more promising than I think a lot of us thought he would be for uh, fantasy value wise. I don't think any of us really doubted his talent and that he's going to be a good quarterback in the league, but he's a little bit more fantasy relevant than uh, we expected. I agree. Um, surprisingly enough. Um, again, you're not rolling him out there uh, in your lineup, but good things to come. I think for Philadelphia with him at the helm, let's talk about a wide receiver that I know drove Vinny absolutely nuts on the last podcast. Um, quote-unquote bad wide receiver, but put up good numbers. Nelson Aguilar, six receptions, 86 yards, and a touchdown last week. Um, Alshon Jeffrey, three for 38 yards. Um, you know, we knew people – we were downplaying Jeffrey a bit based on the matchup and the coverage. Um, so I think Jeffrey can bounce back here against this week. Uh, again, the Chiefs lose Eric Berry, who is the center mm-hmm. of that big core, that defense. So that definitely hurts, um, you know, their secondary a bunch. Yes. I think you can roll Jeffrey out there against the Chiefs, particularly Berry. Um, and then Aguilar, you know, 
is very interesting to watch. Um, we'll see what Dude, happens I like with it. Peters. I like him. I just don't know where Marcus Peters uh, is going to go. I don't know if I, I like him, but I like it. I think uh, – I don't know if it's a fluke. I think that they wanted to work Nelson, Nelson Aguilar for the past two years now, and I think that maybe this is the year that it works out. <sighs> maybe. That's sad to say. Um <laughs> Dude, it looked good this time. I mean, it looked good last I mean, it's one week. It's, so it is. It's, it's not something to be high hopes, but, like, I think he's worth the waiver ad, and I think, especially in a PPR league, I mean, he had some good targets. I so. agree. Get him, off, get him off the wire. Get him on your on your bench. Um, but I expect more looks Alshon's way uh, this week. Well, to, yeah. To I mean, he's – Make up with that. So one. maybe Aguilar comes down a little bit. Maybe some of those come away from Zach Ertz, who went eight for 93. Um, but all around, nice week. Last week overall for the Eagles, I think Zach Ertz, uh, again, plays well here against Kansas City. Barry is the one who kind of held Gronk in check last week. So without Barry, um, you know, I think Ertz yeah. will be okay here against Kansas City. Definitely. Um, running backs, the Garrett Blunt, Darren Sproles, Wendell Smallwood. Uh, Blunt goes one reception for one yard for one touchdown and 46 yards on the ground. Um, I think you're clear. You're obviously saved by that touch, that receiving touchdown. Take it away. He was, he had 4.6 fantasy points. Um, I, if you own LeGarrette Blount, I'd probably try and sell him if you can get anything for him because I don't believe in him based on that offense. Yeah. I mean, definitely try selling him. If not, I, I don't hate LeGarrette Blount as a flex play still yet. I think he might be someone that's going to be kind of touchdown dependent, but they're going to be working with a lot in the red zone. So, I'm still cool with the Garrett Blunt. Yeah, I mean, again, like you said, the red zone, we watched Gillsley fall into the end zone three times last week against the Chiefs. So, again, Blunt, that's all he needs is to get into the end zone. So if they yep. give it to him in the red zone, he can easily fall in a few times against the Chiefs. Right. Um, but, again, I think long-term I'm probably trying to stay away from him. I was the same way going into draft. What are we doing with Wendell Smallwood? Is that someone that we're looking on adding? And um, I'm not quite yet. Um I, I don't know. I, I just I, – I don't like Blunt, but I'm afraid that maybe they continue to let him tumble into the end zone. I'm super split on what to do with this backfield at all, if I'm being honest. Yeah. I don't think you go for Wendell Samoa just yet. He didn't do anything too um, crazy. I think, he, what was it, four times he rushed? So, yeah. Uh, yep. Uh, it is what it is. So, monitor that. Garrett but- Blunt is still the, 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 still the main back with a lot of Darren Sproles being sprinkled in there. So, um like I said, I think LeGarrette Blunt is still okay to play as a flex and kind of Kyle Rudolph him with the hopes of a, a touchdown. I agree. Don, is there anybody else on the Eagles you want to talk about? Um, I don't know. I don't think so. Um, we already hit Ertz. Torrey Smith, you suck. Um, All right, let's pick him. I'm taking the Chiefs. I'm going to go Eagles. Screw you. I'm sorry, uh, man. No, it's okay. I get it. No, I like the- Nothing personal, just business. I got you. Nothing yeah. personal, just business. Fair enough. Uh, all right, guys. We're going to jump into some reader questions. We picked out two for the first part of the preview. We've got a few more on the second part of the preview. First one, Don, here comes from Chuck. He says, standard league, two running backs and no flex position in this lineup. He says, I need to pick two. LaShawn McCoy, Kareem Hunt, and Marshawn Lynch. Which two are you starting? Well, I'm definitely playing McCoy. Yep. And Raiders are playing the Jets this week, right? They are. Oh, my God. That sucks. I want to play Kareem Hunt so bad. Um, But Lynch is also playing against the Jets. Um, Wow. I'm playing Hunt. I'm going going Hunt. Yeah. I'm going going by Hunt. Um, I think that the matchups are real nice with Lynch, but – after watching what Kareem Hunt did, uh, I, I like it. Yeah, yeah I'm going to go Kareem Hunt. And I'm Chiefs biased. So sweep it through there, Chuck. Second question comes in from Derek. He says, half point PPR flex question. He says, do I start Tevin Coleman or Kerwin Williams? He says, Kerwin returns kicks and my league awards points for return yardage. Now that he's named the starter against a bad defense, would kickoff yard points give him the edge over Tevin Coleman? Yeah, you're, you're definitely taking Kerwin Williams. I agree 100%, Derek. Kern Williams is your guy. And, uh, guys, that's going to do it for part one of the pre- fantasy preview here. Uh, we're going to come come at you Friday morning with a part two preview 
uh, with the rest of the games. You can check us out on iTunes, SoundCloud, Spreaker, Google Play, and more. Wherever you guys listen to your podcast, you can find us. Leave us a review if you like the show or if you don't. You can also get the LTF app, apps on Apple and Android to look for those in the App Store. If you have an Amazon Alexa or an Echo, uh, you can find us on there as well. Start and sit questions um, and really anything in between that you want to do. Get pumped up for week two, but not too pumped because we have the second part of the preview coming at you in just over 24, 24 hours. For Let's Talk Fantasy Football, I am Nick Shrek. We will catch you on the flip side. This has been Let's Talk Fantasy Football. Thanks for listening.